Our first story contains disturbing footage of hunting and may upset sensitive viewers. It's about rising tensions between poachers, conservationists and nature-loving suburbanites in the Western Cape. At its centre, it's the practice of wildlife snaring. And Masa, we certainly aren't strangers to the controversies over hunting in this country. Clay investigates. It is 8 a.m. and we're meeting two rangers out on patrol. John Friedman from the Cape of Good Hope SPCA and Robert Stella, an honorary ranger from Sand Park's Table Mountain National Park. Good morning, Albert. How are you? Good morning. This morning, within a stone's throw of suburbia, they're scouting the Greenbelt near Fishhook in Cape Town on the lookout for snares set by poachers. I'm about to join John and Robert on a path where there's a likelihood of a snare hidden under a thick bush or a tree. Let's see what we go find. A snare is a rudimentary piece of wire shaped into a loop anchored down in an area known for animals. Okay, so here's a perfect example of where um, a poacher will set a snare. It's a main track, animals in and out here on a daily basis. Robert and John are trained trackers. Footprints in the sand, discarded material and broken vegetation are possible clues helping to hunt down suspected poachers. We'll be able to go through the material left behind, the detritus, and see what we can find. There might be a clue here. We might find something like a knife or something that might be used in snaring material. Even though we're close to busy suburban Cape Town, the range of animals found here may surprise you. So it's anything from uh, mongoose, uh, guinea fowl, uh, hraisbokki, caracal, unfortunately. So no shortage of animals, but why the need to trap them? The poachers, they target anything. And, and we feel that the, the main reason, obviously, is muti, you know, the muti and supplying the meat trade. Uh, the skins are sold on, on, on the market, uh, like genet skins, uh, caracal skins, mongoose skins. This phenomenon of snaring really became an issue around about the time of the COVID-19 lockdowns. You know, as things get tougher, maybe, for certain segments of society, things like snaring become more attractive. So being able to come out into an area like this, harvest some wildlife, sell, you know, get some money from that. Copy that, I'm going to send the Western Dune and I'll meet up with you uh, at the top, over. So we haven't found any traces of snares this morning, but this is definitely one of the hotspots targeted by poachers. The Nurtuk wetlands, not far from Fishuk Valley, are another hotspot, sandwiched between a luxury housing estate and Masipumelele, a fast-growing township of about 30,000 people. The wetlands are a convenient hunting ground. Gabriella Leighton of the Urban Caracol Project has conducted an in-depth study of the effect of urbanization on wildlife, focusing on the caracal, a species of wild cat. So the major threat to caracals on the Cape Peninsula is being hit by cars. The second major thing is exposure to disease and pesticides, which is uh, a uniquely sort of urban threat that they have to face. But one of the um, sort of third most important threats that we um, detected is poaching, and particularly snaring. We've detected at least 12 individuals over the last four or five years that have been caught in, in snares or, or some kind of trap on the peninsula. So what happens once we find a caracal caught in a snare? Generally, when, a, when an animal's caught in a snare, what happens is it's a wire loop that tightens around the animal. And it can tighten around any part of them. Usually it's a leg or around the abdomen. And it's a really horrible way to die because essentially the wire just constricts and constricts until that animal passes away from you know, organ failure or the, the injuries or some kind of infection. Our next stop is the Greenbelt in Constantia, just a few kilometers away. Even here, poachers lay deadly snares for small wild animals. Jeffrey Heath, a frequent visitor to these forests, spotted a wire noose in the undergrowth whilst clearing alien plants. I discovered that uh, the poacher was cutting down uh, some of the small 
cotton Easter trees to make uh, fences and walls for the animal to go towards uh, the snare. And uh, the snares were made out of wire uh, with a noose at the end. Every time I was coming back here, I would find more and then more and then another. Snaring is illegal, causing animals unimaginable suffering, but that's often the case with legal hunting too. So is this a case of the law being at odds with tradition, unfairly targeting the poor? Is it possible to find solutions where people's livelihoods and even identity are at stake? Or is this a space where custom and conservation will forever collide? When I was a young boy, I was shooting the birds. I've learned it from my elder brothers. But hunting, as I, as I said, I had the word portion. This longtime hunter from the Eastern Cape has asked us to hide his identity. There's no difference, he says, between shooting an animal and snaring it. I have my work. That means I afford to buy food. But I continue with hunting. He lives in an informal settlement in the Cape's Boerland, close to a greenbelt. He has a taste for a range of wild animals. I like the bushmeat. I like the bushmeat. I normally catch tin box, um, some kind of box, and the porcupine. There at home, I normally catch, I normally catch the caracal. It sounds matter of fact until he produces a video of a small antelope he recently caught in a snare. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the meat is for the pot. The skin and other parts will be sold. We are also selling parts to the Sangoma, like the skin. The last buck I cash, it was um, it was on June. Uh, that skin was 450. Traditional medicines are widely used here in Africa, with up to 80% of the continent turning to natural remedies, according to the World Health Organization. Plants, herbs and animal parts are key ingredients. A traditional healer invites us into her sacred space where we ask her about the caracol. She also explains how she uses porcupine intestines to cure stomach cramps. Our last stop is the Botlare Conservancy in the Boerland, where two small antelopes and a caracal were recently found trapped in snares. We were met by Anita Wilkinson from the Cape Leopard Trust. So this is a typical animal path that might be used to uh, put a snare. For a better understanding of the threats posed to leopard and other animals, Anita and her team want to know why and where snaring occurs most in the Boerland. A field worker was sent out to gather research. He walked, I think it was about 1,400 um, kilometers by foot on these properties, and he removed more than 600 snares. From that study, it was evident that um, a lot of uh, farm workers actually also set snares, and that the, the animals that they target are small game, and it is usually for the pot. Globally, the main threats to predators such as leopards are habitat loss and fragmentation, the loss of prey animals and direct persecution by humans. If there is indiscriminate hunting um, with the snares, many of the prey species are taken away and the prey base of the leopard decreases and that affects the survival chances of the leopard. What will happen if the snaring issue is not brought under control, if it just continues and escalates? So in um, parts of West Africa, there is what they call the empty forest syndrome. And I think that is what we would get, this empty fanbos. It's just no animals left in the landscape. And if that's the catastrophic result of the clash between conservation and tradition, then everyone loses. Workable solutions, though, appear in short supply. 
if I catch an animal and then law enforcement comes, then I have to run. But who does this animal belong to? Because this animal, it doesn't belong to anyone. Kona kuko right, but impilo yetu. Asna kwenzanga kumbi. There are fewer than 60 caracals left in the Cape Peninsula. Without bold action, their survival and that of numerous other species here and in the Boerland. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access carte blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.